Is, is there a specific uh, technique that, uh, for instance, going back, you mentioned uh, a mother-in-law before. Are there like uh, a strategy, one, two, and three steps that uh, you found uh, helpful in, in that regard? Well, you know, I think, Stephen, what most people do is when most people are confronted with crisis or when they're conf confronted with trauma or something isn't going well in their life or they're experiencing loss and those conditions are so uncomfortable that people finally make up their mind to actually uh, change, that they decide, I can't go on business as usual, I can't think the same thoughts, I can't behave the same way, and I can't feel these feelings any longer. And so for some people it requires... Uh, being diagnosed with a disease or, you know, getting fired from a job or ending a relationship or whatever people do. It's usually some type of harsh circumstance that causes them to wake up and begin to realize that, that um, they have to make some measurable changes. However, um, most people return back to the familiar experiences because they memorize those feelings and, and those feelings then endorse who they are as a personality. It gives them a sense of self. Even though the, the person who suffers doesn't like to suffer, they're, they're, they find a certain amount of identity in that suffering, and, and when they have to let go of that suffering, of course, then they don't know who they are. But the process of change, and this is what I teach at, teach at the workshops that I do, require, requires both unlearning or unmemorizing that old self that's connected to feelings that are connected to past experiences that that person has memorized because that's who they think they are. So if we were to then say, uh, why don't you sit down and close your eyes and think about how you think when you feel this way. What do you say to yourself? Become familiar, become conscious of how you behave in this particular program and what are the other feelings that are derived from it. And the process of becoming conscious or familiar with or making known those unconscious states of mind and body is literally what the word meditation means. The word meditation literally translates into to become familiar with, to make known. So in the process of becoming familiar with your unconscious thoughts, your unconscious actions and behaviors, and your unconscious feelings, and making them conscious, that that is a what we call in neuroscience metacognition. And metacognition means that we can observe who we are. And that's because we have a big piece of machinery in the front of our brain called the frontal lobe that allows us to speculate and to observe so that we can change our behaviors and do a better job in life in one life.